Bobby, you co-hosted, how long ago was it? Do you remember? Oh, about, it's over two years. It's and over you, two if years. If I remember, you were at the Latin Casino and you were trying to do both. Oh, yeah. Two shows a night over exactly there. Exactly right. And they coming here in the daytime and wheezing. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And that's a disappointing thing. I, I, I don't really think it's a good idea for, well, at least, certainly not for me, to try to double up and do two things at once. Yeah. And, um, uh, you know, it just didn't happen to work out. Well, I don't think that people realize how hard uh, someone like yourself works in a nightclub. You do two shows a night. And each one of them is like an hour and a half, yeah, minimum. Right. And, and you're on stage all the time. And it's a great expenditure of energy, and especially if you're, if you're enjoying what you're doing, which I, you know, uh, I used to do, and I'm doing again, I'm happy to say. Enjoying it, that is. Uh, so it's silly to try to kind of run around and do three. There are some people who do it, like Sammy. Sammy can do, you know, Sammy Davis can just do about uh, five shows a day and then six benefits in between the five shows. I followed him around. Which is for, great. Well, he did a week with me. I followed him for three days and collapsed. <clears throat> yeah. I collapsed, and I thought I was done. Yeah. No, because... He, he does a show, and then he, he got married while I was here, and I went to the dinner. Yeah, well, that'll, that'll uh, take a lot of energy out and of And just it. having <laughs> dinner, just having dinner, we were up all night, you know. Mm -hmm. And I came in the next morning, I was like this, like a zombie, you yeah. know. But there's some people that really feed off the, uh, the, um, that kind of pace. I, on the other hand, just uh, collapsed rather early, so I much prefer it the way it is. In other words, uh, now if I uh, lose my voice, it's because of uh, nervousness, not from taxation. Yeah. <laughs> what happened to you since I last saw you? You look so different, Bob. Well, a lot of things have happened. Um, have we got a couple of minutes? Or are you going up no, no, to the no, station? No, 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 okay. no, 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 no. Um, so in, in June of uh, 68, after uh, uh, Senator Bobby Kennedy was uh, assassinated, um, a, a whole slew of things happened inside me that um, I felt needed some correcting. Now, uh, I don't want to bore anybody or get too um, introspective here, but suffice it to say that the changes that I felt were necessary could only come from me, from within. I had to do something about the way I was living, my approach to things, my values in general. And it took me about eight or nine or ten months to realize that everything I was, practically everything I was surrounded by was alienating me from myself, you see. It was just keeping me apart. Um, and also, certainly not, not adding uh, uh, any, any great points be between myself and an audience or between myself and a group of people. Um, you, say, so, you said the way you were living, your values, yeah. what were you, how were you Well, living? for example, I'd open my closet and there were 85 suits uh, ranging from $300 or $350 or $400 a piece, uh, 12, 15 tuxedos at $400 or $450 a piece, 90 pairs of shoes, uh, uh, it, just an incredible excess. Uh, now, I know that part of that comes, came from the need to compensate for when I was a young person you because I was born in uh, very, very uh, uh, poverty-stricken uh, surroundings and I just didn't know what it was to have anything material. So you, you try to make that compensation. Suffice it to say that it, it, it doesn't answer whatever was really, you know, kind of plaguing me. Um, and I just got tired. I mean, I had a, had a big house homes. at the beach. You had a lot of homes, didn't you? I had a big house at the beach and I had another house in town and I had, a, you know, long cars and just a lot of garbage when you finally break it down. Uh, uh, nothing you could really hold and, and that could, you know, make you feel good and warm and, and so forth. Um, they were manifestations of, as I say, what I felt was necessary. There's also the competitive thing that exists when you're in, uh, when you're in show business as a performer, kind of the eye towards looking what to, uh, to what yeah, so-and-so has, has yeah. right. Which is, it's not peculiar to show business, it obvi obviously happens all across the, uh, the country in all walks of life, keeping up with the Joneses, etc. Anyhow, make a long story short, which may be too late already, the, um, <laughs> the, the fact remains that I felt the need uh, for these changes, and slowly but surely, I just divested myself of everything. I just sold everything, cars, electronic equipment, uh, boats, uh, uh, houses, you name it. I just got rid of it. And the more I got rid of it... Did you get rid of the clothes, too? Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. What size shoe do you wear, about? <laughs> <laughs> they're, they're all gone. I gave those things to, uh, to uh, uh, most of those things to Synanon in, in California. Oh, that's and, great. And, and the things that were saleable, you know, because don't, don't misunderstand me, there was no great philanthropic thing. It was a question of, I needed to rid myself of these things, so I sold them off. Um, uh, you didn't work for a while, either. No, no. Right after that, I, I, I uh, uh, took a little trailer, an 18-foot trailer, um, literally a trailer, you know, the, the, the kind that you kind of hook up to the back of a car. And not a, a little trailer, not a deluxe trailer? Eight, 18 feet. Uh -huh. You can't be deluxe in 18 feet. A lot of people, I, I had heard about it. Isn't yeah. it funny? People said, oh, sure, he's up by himself, but he's got a quarter of a million dollar trailer. That wasn't no, true, right? No, afraid not. It cost $2,400. Okay. That's what it cost. And um, I lived in it for, um, uh, well, a little less than a year. 
Uh, and during that where, time, excuse me, where exactly in, did you in, take it? In Big Sur, there's a lovely area called Pfeiffer Beach. Big Sur is northern California, uh, central California, northern on the coast. Northern California, super. And it Gorgeous really is country. a beautiful. Well, you know what it is. It's a question of there is a, is a place in California that really is as as um, almost as intact as it was probably 10, 20,000 years ago. And um, needless to say, I just got myself there with some friends who live on a on a farm. By the way, I wasn't alone. I wasn't going into a total reclusive I kind see. of existence. But during that time, all I had to, to work with were, were, were books and, and uh, um, uh, the, the earth around me and really a togetherness with all of the things that have been here all the time. Now, excuse see. me, the friends, were they in show business? No, 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 no. The fellow that owns the land is, a, is, a, is a, uh, an ex-engineer who chucked it all about 10, 15 years ago and uh, bought himself a little parcel up there and kind of just lives off the land, if you, if you know what I'm saying. That's great. And, and it was just a, uh, an, an, I was... Let me put it this way. I found that if I hadn't, if I was not going to do this, I would have been destroyed spiritually, put it that way, you mm -hmm. see? And as a result of doing it, I felt better. Now, what I've come to know, and this is the most important thing, because I went out to ask, to, to get an answer, certainly, and there was no one answer, billions of them, I guess. But for me, it was a question of, I need that kind of existence, but I also need to perform. And until I did that, until I went away and took that time, I did not know that I needed to perform. So now what I'm, what I'm able to do is maintain a kind of balance between a simplistic existence. I live in a little house now in, in, in Malibu on the beach, which kind of keeps me together with, uh, with uh, the realities of... of you have uh, children, don't you? I have a little boy, eight and a half years old. How now. about... Uh, you have to see him, don't you? Oh, sure. That's the reason I stay in Southern California. Otherwise, <laughs> my heart would be living somewhere else, because it, uh, it gets uh, awfully hard. I'm, when, I, when I say living somewhere else, I mean, literally, I'd, I would live somewhere else and then come to work wherever the work was. Now, you went also from the name Bobby to calling yourself simply Bob, and now you're back to Bobby. Well, Why? Uh, on the screen, I did a picture for Richard Brooks called uh, The Happy Ending, and uh, he asked me how I'd like to be billed. In all my film career, I wanted to be called Robert Darren on the screen. I thought that was neat, you know. I just, it always, always says James uh, Stewart, and then it says Jimmy. Everybody calls him Jimmy, and things like that. And said uh, James uh, Cagney, you know. So I just went yeah. to my, with the full name. You know? Robert Darren. Robert Darren. And, People go into theater and they'd see the Robert Dan and they'd see me on the screen and say, oh, that's Bobby Dan. So he was trying to do something yeah. fancy. <laughs> <laughs> see? I wasn't trying to pull any trick. It was just, anyhow, Robert, Bob, it doesn't matter what you call me as long as it's not early. I'm what did you do with yourself <laughs> during all that time, Bobby? What did I do with myself? Yeah, I mean, did the period you write? Away? Did you do anything constructive? <laughs> Being away was constructive. Uh, Absolutely. If I had done nothing at all that, that one could relate to in terms of writing something down, or, which I did, but if I'd done nothing at all, it would have been well worth it and certainly constructive. See, you must, I just believed, I knew that I had to get out of the kind of existence I was in the middle of for 14, 12, 13, 14 years, just get out of it completely, not a little bit. Don't yeah. misunderstand, a lot yeah. of people that go away, they say, I gotta get away from it all, and they get in the limousine and they go there. That's because things get out of perspective. That's exactly right. And, and if you I, want to get things back into perspective, there's nothing like being alone, like looking into the Grand Canyon or something. Like that. You say, hey, look at how little I am. I don't need a thing. Exactly right. Like an ant, right? Exactly right. I, I, I really, really believe that the insignificance of man, of the significance, rather, of man, all man, is in his insignificance, in his inability to find, to know what it is that he is uh, contributing to. Because we must be going towards something. We're not just put here. Yeah. You know, that Could you have going, done this? Could yeah. you have done what you did, though, if you hadn't first been successful? I don't think I would have had any choice, and I probably would have been struggling um, all my life to be successful and therefore never taken the time. I think that's what happens to most people. Mm -hmm. Two things happen. Those, those of us who, are, uh, who, are, who come up against success get a, an opportunity to ask the same questions that I asked. I didn't do anything differently, but I don't think most people really take advantage of the answer they come up with. I believe that there are a lot of performers who, at the point at which they find themselves in need of self-re-evaluation, come up with the wrong answer. They, and they go on to be caricatures. I won't mention any names, but we all know those people Just who... Just give us some initials. Certainly. <laughs> no, uh, that's Certain people who are marvelous performers and we all are attracted to them. And all of a sudden, a few years go by, and then you go to see him and you say, I, I know he's doing what he's supposed to be doing, but it doesn't look like his heart's in it. And I really believe that the reason for that is that he's looked at himself and said, this is what they want, that's what I'm going to give them, and I, I don't have to worry about being a success. It'll, 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 all, it'll continue that way. What is it about this, this business that the bigger people get, the more confused they seem to get? And the, the really big ones that I have met, the superstars that I have met in this business, are not happy people. Well, the, 
Believe I me, can't they're answer. not happy people. I can't answer. You know them. that, Bobby. They're, I believe they're that. They're not happy. I believe that. Uh, but I also believe it's because they are continuing to do and, and be part of a mold that is not of their, it may have been of their original making, but it no longer satisfies them, and yet they must do it. Agents, managers, is that press involvement, family uh, responsibilities, people in their ears. For example, what I heard more than anything else was when I elected to change my lifestyle, what I heard more than anything else was, you can't do that to your fans. You can't do that to your friends. You can't, you can't do that. And I see enough don't walk, no smoking, don't run, stop signs in my life all around to know that they're put here by people. And my contention is I'm a people and I know what I can do and what I cannot do and it should not be and it will not be based on your feelings yeah. or forgive me, your feelings. When I'm entertaining, I want to do what you want. But I would like it to have some kind of a meaning for me. In fact, I insist on it now. What did you find out about yourself in that length of time? That I can do and be both things to me. Do you follow? I can right. be the person and I can be the performer. And as long as I don't try to confuse where I am which, I'll be all right. I am both all the time, if you know what I'm saying, mm -hmm. except that the, the innards of, of my particular soul dictate that I perform when I feel the need to perform, you see, and that when I'm not performing, that I do those other things which really please me. I don't mean hobbies, playing tennis or golf in between shows. I'm not talking. You about worry that. about being a hit when you're on stage? No, I, I never had that. Uh, really? Yeah. Uh, what it what it really boils down to is that I go out there and I really, when I'm enjoying it, which is now again, you follow, mm -hmm. that I feel my enjoyment kind of pervades and then and gets a chance for them to to for the audience to to enjoy it as well. That doesn't mean I'm always a hit by any stretch. But then again, I don't always feel like I'm going to be a hit. Well, I'm sure glad. I'm not worried about. It. I'm glad you chose to come back and do another week with us, and he's going to be performing all week. I'll be there.